Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel, Let's School Entire Science. If you are new to here and want to learn about food processing technology, please hit the subscribe button by the bell. Today we are gonna talk about instant coffee processing. Instant coffee, also called soluble coffee, coffee crystals and coffee powder, is a beverage derived from brewed coffee beans that enables people to quickly prepare hot coffee by adding hot water or milk to the powder or crystals and stirring. Instant coffee is commercially prepared by either freeze drying or spray drying, after which it can be rehydrated. Instant coffee in a concentrated liquid form is also manufactured. A coffee bean is actually a seed. When dried, roasted and ground, it's used to brew coffee. If the seed isn't processed, it can be planted and grow into a coffee tree. Coffee seeds are generally planted in large beds in shade nurseries. The seedlings will be watered frequently and shaded from bright sunlight until they are hardly enough to be permanently planted. Planting often takes place during the wet season so that the soil remains moist while the roots become firmly established. Depending on the variety, it will take approximately 3 to 4 years for the newly planted coffee trees to be a fruit. The fruit called the coffee cherry turns a bright deep red when it is ripe and ready to be harvested. There is typically one major harvest a year. In countries like Colombia where the two flowering annually, there is a main and secondary crop. In most countries, the crop is picked by hand in a labor-intensive and difficult process. Though in places like Brazil where the landscape is relatively flat and the coffee fields immense, the process has been mechanized whether by hand or by machine. All coffee is harvested in one or two ways. The first way is strip picked. All of the cherries are stripped of the branches at one time either by machine or by hand. And the second one is selectively picked. Only the ripe cherries are harvested and they are picked individually by hand. Pickers rotate among the trees every 8 to 10 days, choosing only the cherries which are at the peak of ripeness because this kind of harvest is labor intensive and more costly, it is used to primarily to harvest the finer Arabica beans. A good picker averages approximately 100 to 200 pounds of coffee cherries per day, which will produce 20 to 40 pounds of coffee beans. Each worker's daily haul is carefully weighed and each picker is paid on the merit of his or her work. The day's harvest is then transported to the processing plant.
Once the cherries has been picked, processing must be begin as quickly as much possible to prevent fruit spoilage. Depending on the location and local resources, coffee is processed in one of two ways. The first method is the dry method, which is the age-old method of processing coffee and is still used in many countries where water resources are limited. The freshly picked cherries are simply spread out on huge surfaces to dry in the sun. In order to prevent the cherries from spoiling, they are raked and turned throughout the day, then covered at night or during rain to prevent them from getting wet. Depending on the weather, this process might continue for several weeks for each batch of coffee until the moisture content of the cherries drops to 11%. If the beans has been processed by the wet method, the pulped and fermented beans must now be dried to approximately 11% moisture to properly prepare them for storage. These beans still inside the parchment envelope can be sun-dried by spreading them on drying tables or floors where they are turned regularly or they can be machine-dried in large tumblers. The dried beans are known as parchment coffee and are warehoused in jute or sizzle bag until they are ready for export. Before being exported, parchment coffee is processed in the following manner. Hulling machinery removes the parchment layer from wet processed coffee. Hulling dry processed coffee refers to removing the entire dried husk, the exocarp, mesocarp and endocarp of the dried cherries. Polishing is an optional process where any silver skin that remains on the beans after hulling is removed by the machine. While polished beans are considered superior to unpolished one, in reality there is little difference between the two. Grading and sorting is done by size and weight and beans are also reviewed for color flaws or other imperfections. Finally, defective beans are removed either by hand or machinery. Beans that are unsatisfactory due to deficiencies, unacceptable size or color, over fermented beans, insect damaged, unhulled are removed. In many countries, this process is done both by machine and by hand, ensuring that only the finest quality coffee beans are exported. The milk beans now referred to as green coffee are loaded onto ship and either jute or sizzle bag loaded in shipping containers or bulk shipped inside plastic lined containers. Coffee is repeatedly tested for quality and taste. This process is referred to as cupping and usually takes place in a room specifically designed to facilitate the process. Then, let's see roasting of the coffee. Roasting transforms green coffee into the aromatic brown beans that we purchase in our favorite stores or cafes. Most roasting machines maintain a temperature of about 550 degrees Fahrenheit. The beans are kept moving throughout the entire process to keep them from burning. When they reach an internal temperature of about 400 degrees Fahrenheit, they begin to turn brown and the caffeine, a fragrant oil locked inside the beans, begins to emerge. This process called pyrolysis is at the heart of roasting. It produces the flavor and aroma of the coffee we drink. After roasting, the beans are immediately cooled either by air or water. 
roasting is generally performed in the importing countries because freshly roasted bean must reach the consumer as quickly as possible. The next step is grinding coffee. The objective of a proper grind is to get the most flavor in a cup of coffee. How coarse or fine the coffee is ground depends on the braving method. The length of time the ground will be in contact with water determines the ideal grade of grind. Generally, the finer the grind, the more quickly the coffee should be prepared. That's why coffee ground for an espresso machine is much finer than coffee brewed in a drip system. Then ground coffee is dissolved into hot water. By this process, coffee flavor, aroma and color are extracted from the coffee grounds and a highly concentrated liquor is obtained. The coffee solution is about 15 to 30 percent coffee by mass at the end of the extraction process. After filtration, the coffee extract is dried to get the solid soluble coffee. The liquor is frozen to about minus 40 celsius to form a thin layer that is then broken into tiny pieces these granules are then loaded into the freeze dryer both batch and continuous plants are used to freeze dry the frozen product a batch process is used for low capacities while a continuous process is used for large capacities this process creates a high quality instant coffee for a few reasons. The low temperature preserves aromas. Rather than being evaporated instantly from the crazy hot temperature, the aromatic compounds are allowed to remain inside the coffee crystals and ready for your enjoyment. And the low temperature maintains the chemical composition without the presence of heat. The acids are able to remain as is. The sugars are able to remain sugars and the complexity of delicious coffee is preserved. So that is the end of the brief introduction about instant coffee production by freeze drying. You can search more details on instant coffee production with freeze drying through books and online research papers. So if you like this video, please give it thumbs up and hope to catch you with next time with a new lesson. Thanks for watching.